right. Future gem. We have, we're getting a gym? I don't know. Why not? <laughs> well, already, folks, welcome back to another episode of the Break Time Podcast. This is a podcast for creative talk, business, and life. I'm your co-host, Lucas. I'm here with Vicky. Hey, guys. And I'm here with Sam. Hello. And today, we actually have some pretty rad couple guests. These are two guys. They are industrial designers that really focus on sustainability and really making sure that all their products are as sustainable as possible. They actually did all of our branding. These guys are quite incredible at what they do. Everybody, welcome Anchor Design. Woo! Wow. Thanks for, the, uh, thanks for the, the amazing intro. Yeah, how do we, how do we follow that now? <laughs> well, um, on that note, um, I'll just throw the intro in right here. Anyways, um, so... Starting off, I think the best way to start this podcast is to actually have Alex and Ryan introduce themselves because Alex and Ryan are two pretty incredible guys and they know themselves better than we know them. So take it away, guys. All right. Hey, guys. I'm Ryan, one half of Anchor. Alex, the other half of Anchor. We started Anchor Design Co. You have funny last names. <laughs> Alex Neymar. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, we started, we started the company about uh, a little over three years now. Um, yeah, it's a sustainable product design company and we do uh, 3D rendering as well. So why don't you give them a little bit of an insight on what exactly you guys did for us when you first started our company? Because I think um, so you guys probably did one of the biggest parts of our company with us, so. Uh, yeah, so um, we ran uh, initially a brand sprint uh, with Co-Spray to establish uh, some of those values and kind of get everybody on the same page and know what the direction of the company was going to be. And then uh, out of there, we developed the, uh, the branding for you guys. Yeah, it was awesome, actually. We had such a good experience with these guys. I just want to point it out. We, and especially starting a, we're bootstrapping a company together, they, um, we did something, and, and I think we can be pretty transparent about this because we do that with a lot of companies. Um, we did a trade with them. We provided them with a bunch of videos, and they did our branding for us. Yeah, yeah. And that was pretty cool. Yeah, and the content you guys have done for us. continues. All right, go ahead. Oh, just the content you guys have done for us has been just amazing. It, it, it helps our clients get a bit better picture of who we are um, and, and leads even before we meet them, which has been just like so, so helpful. Yeah, it's interesting. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's one thing to have a client and help them tell their story, but then when it comes to yourself, it's always very difficult. So I mean, you guys have done an awesome job helping us tell our story. So, yeah, yeah, we really appreciate that, guys. Um, we loved work. We always love working with you guys, um, and we still do because this sort of synergy is, is just ongoing right now. Um, but I wanted to say the whole brand sprint thing, um, super insightful. Uh, I It was not what I was expecting, but in a good way. Yeah. Uh, I, I've done some sort of... I've worked with branding before, like as in with stuff I did before coming to even Canada, right? And like working with designers and stuff. And a lot of times they just send you literally a, like a one or two page questionnaire <laughs> to fill out. And it's like, what do you, you want your logo to look like, right? Yeah, no, they, they were uh, <laughs> pre pretty hands on. And I mean, like our, our logo, if you can see what it is, that was also done, done by those guys. So they kind of went... You know, from from beginning to end, which is really awesome. But we're getting really off oh, yeah. track with what we wanted to talk about here today, actually. Sorry, yeah. So <laughs> uh, I'm going to take this over. Um, today, actually, Anchor, they reached out to us because they have a cool little topic that they want to talk about, which I think is actually super relevant for, especially in the creative realm. Um, so they actually want to talk about how your habits and your, uh, your habits and your hobbies affect your career as a creative but I'm going to let you guys take over, introduce it, talk about it, tell us what you're thinking, and let's get this conversation going. Sure. All right. Where do you want to start? Well, it was, uh, it was Ryan's idea, actually. It was something that came up uh, through like executive coaching, but it was, it was just that the idea that your hobbies um, can shape your career if, if you're able to pull in certain things, as well as uh, your career can kind of give back to your hobbies. And there's a whole bunch of ways we've seen this happening for ourselves and then also for... Uh, other creatives around us and people in our, you know, our people, I guess. Yeah. One of the things we've always heard is, um, you know, be, we, be weary of making your hobby your career because you can kind of suck the fun out of it that way. But we think it's very important for there to be some tie-ins between the two, some link. Um, and the two of them will really fuel each other. And um, 
if, if your career is completely separate from your hobbies and your interests, you're probably going to run into some burnout pretty quickly because it's not something that fuels you, it doesn't interest you. And what we found, um, in both Alex and I, like design isn't just our job, it's not just what we do, it, it's really who we are as people. And outside of Anchor, outside of client projects, we both do a lot of our own creative work uh, just for ourselves. And we find that regardless of what it is that we're working on, there's a lot of crossovers between them. I mean, my, my biggest interest and passion in life is racing. And that's really how we even got started in design, just looking at the way things were always done, the creative ways that the designers got around rules and regulations to make their cars a little bit faster than their competitors and things like that. And, and that sort of mindset and ethos comes into my work now too, where I, I find ways of sidestepping certain issues and finding ways to eliminate problems rather than just simply solving them. I just want to interject really quick. Um, you always have such excellent verbiage, <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> like you, the words, the words you use are always just so I don't know, perfect. And it's like you read the dictionary and the thesaurus like for fun. <laughs> Even practicing. I, I do read a lot, not necessarily the dictionary though. Yeah, I'm more like sci-fi. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. What what about you, Alex? How does how do you think your hobbies with design and all that kind of ties into your work and like your career? Sure. Yeah. So um, early on, I guess even back to like high school or even as a kid, I was drawing all the time, just sketching, sketching um, superheroes, and then that evolved into cars. And um, in high school, a lot of the profs and stuff, they were like, "Oh, you want to be an engineer or an ar architect," but um, that hobby uh, and sort of that fine arts background has been so useful in visualizing things uh, very quickly on paper or uh, even like I, I paint, I paint as well. So like painting and just having that kind of artist eye has also been able to inform me uh, as a designer. So that's where my, my hobby kind of fills my career. Nice. Nice, nice. What about you guys? Like, um, what, like hobbies and work, how does that tie in with everything well I, I started droning like three years ago now and wait droning droning or drawing what you say droning droning or droning okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. i first thought you said drawing i was like i didn't know you're the designer too <laughs> well i i actually i actually did anyway um i lived off of my paintings for a year back in hungary so i did i did start drawing when We've i was got six. an artist <laughs> <laughs> yeah but anyway I, I started flying drones about three years ago and I enjoyed it so much, and, and, and it was just pretty, like, one day, I was like, it was pretty clear to me that I want to make it a business, because like, I love doing this, why don't I why don't I do something with it, you know? It's pretty cool. Nice. Yeah, I, I think for me, um, I think for me, it kind of, like, obviously, like, do making videos is a lot of fun. I really enjoy it, um, and it's one of those things where I still remember the first time I got paid by someone to make a video, and I was like... Wait, you're, you're paying me to do that? I would have done this for free. Like, <laughs> well, what do you mean you're paying me? So I think that is kind of the sort of mentality that you should have with like a creative career is if it's something like, would you do this job for free? Like, is, is this something you do for fun? Then yeah, why not try to do it? But at the same time, you get really caught up in really lowballing yourself sometimes where like, you're like, oh, like I would have done this for free. So maybe I should only do it for, I don't know a thousand bucks when it's something you could have done for like nine or 10 grand. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but how, like before, I mean, you know, Vicky, you said three years ago for droning Lucas, I mean, videography, what it's been also two, three years. More, yeah. Yeah. About, about like two ish years. Yeah, yeah. I'd say what about before that? Like, you know, Alex and Ryan spoke about, uh, how, I mean, they've, they've been passionate about drawing and des well designing for probably over 10 years. Oh, I totally misunderstood your question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like, so, Oh, that's fine. Like that's super insightful still. But um, you know, what about sort of things you've done in the past as hobbies? How has that sort of transferred over to today and into your work, into the business, into how you are as a person today, right? Yeah, I would I would say me, um, funny enough, I really wasn't a creative person growing up at all. Um I like I would like take a, take a camera and take photos every once in a while and like I had fun with it, but it was never something I was just like going out and doing really cool stuff with it. And I was like, oh, I wanted to be a carpenter at first. And then I was like, I'm gonna work in the brewing industry. So I did that for almost five years. And 
Um, but when I first started like kind of realizing how fun it was to be creative, that's when I kind of got more into it. But I think before that, like what's kind of affected the way I act now about everything is playing sports. Because sports is a huge like group activity, I guess. Like it's like lots of camaraderie. It's lots of relying on those people around you. And I think that's hundred percent affected the way I've the creative I've become. Because I'm not the creative that tries to do every single little thing. I'm not the jack of all trades. Like, if I have someone who's better, like, Vicky's a great example. I suck at flying drones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really bad. So She did crush one of mine. Yeah, I did crash one of Vicky's, and she won't let me forget it. Um, <laughs> it was almost a year ago now. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty true, too. But it's like having her where it's just like, hey, sure, I, I can do this for you but I need to bring this person along. Like, mm -hmm. there's no way I'm not gonna do it. And like, that, that's the kind of person I am. I very focus on the one thing I'm good at, and that's all I'm really gonna do on site. Yeah. That's, that's really cool, because it's like a, a really collaborative focus that came from sports, which, you know, if, if it was your parents that like got you into sports, they probably weren't thinking that that would impact your whole career in that way, but like, it's totally, sh you know, shaped the way that you view your work life. Yeah, 100%. And honestly, I'll, and we've both said it on this podcast too, rugby definitely was the biggest sport for me that really ingrained that whole like team brotherhood mentality and like, like trusting those around you. Like I played, I played like soccer and stuff like that too and baseball and like sure they're team sports, but you, like rugby, you really have to trust your brothers around you. <laughs> like you really have to. Totally. Yeah. What about you, Sam? Um, well, for me, I, I mean, you just said it, you know, um, I think there's two aspects of of how I am today and there's the sort of everyday you know my own values what I what I believe in and all that kind of stuff and that I really draw from rugby from what you said you know sort of uh, leadership initiative you know discipline uh, all that kind of stuff definitely comes from my rugby background um, 100% the team spirit as well like I'm very much a, a team player I, like I don't see myself as an individual when it comes to, well, our business, for example, you know, it's like, I mean, we, we're really good at it. You know, we just help each other out whenever we can, as best we can, right? So all that definitely comes from our rugby background. But then there's the other aspect of it where, I mean, for so many, for so long, you know, um, I, I didn't know that I had like a creative brain uh, because I was put in, like, and this is, we've, I think, covered this in other podcasts, but, you know, you put in this mold after high school, you go to uni, you said, you're told you have to go to university, et cetera, et cetera. And then you yeah. have to go and get a, a corporate job, nine to five, et cetera, right? Yeah. For pretty much most of my 20s, right? And so, but all behind all that, like I apparently have a creative brain, right? <laughs> and I had to, to figure that out. I was like, because like, well, I think when I, what, what, what made me realize that is, you know, at my nine to five, which I hated, I was like, I don't see like a purpose in this because I'm not, I'm just typing at computing all day. I'm not creating anything, right? I want to see my work, I want to see it, right, it, concretely, you know, so I was like, okay, and then I think it's just by, by coincidence, I picked up a camera, I was like, I love this, I'm creating something, it's, it's there, right, and I can do something with it, and I was like, okay, well, this 9.5 is not for me. I think you just said a word that I just want to fire Anchored's direction right now and see what Alex and Ryan have to say. When you guys talk about your hobbies and your careers, what do you think your purpose with it is? Um, I'm firing, man. I'm, I'm coming right for the throat. <laughs> um, one of the things that Sam mentioned was that he uh, didn't think he had a creative brain. And I think that's really one of the, the, the biggest tragedies with a Western human existence. You know, we're, we're put into that sort of the, that mold of going to school and getting a real job and everything. But ultimately, everybody is creative. Um, some people just haven't learned how to express it or, or what kind of outlet works for them in their expression. And um, the same thing happens with sort of like with, with science as well. I mean, every little kid is a scientist in their own right. They, they try different things. They don't understand how, what's going on. And, and, and that curiosity is really at the core of everything, but it kind of gets pushed out of you as you're, as you're growing up. And it's, it's a really, really unfortunate thing. And it's really awesome, Sam, that you were able to sort of discover that again a little bit later on and then you break free from that mold and do your own thing. And I'm sure you're, you're a lot happier for it now. Oh, yeah. So I'm like loving, loving life. Living, <laughs> living, lo live, love, laugh. Live, love, laugh. Laugh, love, live. <laughs> I, think, I think that's actually a really good, really good point, Ryan, um, that a lot of people don't realize the creativity that 
they have in a way in a lot of potentials because um I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a prime example. I didn't think I was creative whatsoever. I really suck at drawing, I'll say. I really suck at, I don't know, like, also writing. I get bored reading. So, like, for me, like, the biggest thing was just working with my hands. Like, I just, really, like, really liked it. So, I think I'm really, really happy that I found this side of, like, my life where, like, I do enjoy kind of doing more creative things. And also, like, lots of my friends that, like live back and like they work or live back in couch and do trades. A lot of those guys do build random, cool, really like small things or they'll like build like this really intricate rack for their car. And I'm like, how did you, I like, I, I don't understand how they envisioned it, but that kind of ties back into like, they are creative in their own sense. They just have to figure out their own creativity. I, I, li I like that. I think um, just a question actually for everyone is, do you think we're losing that creativity uh, that Ryan mentioned because we're, a lot of what we're doing these days as a job is not using our hands, you know, in that sense of like, you know, we're, it's all digital. And so I, I, I believe that creativity actually comes from using our hands and, you know, being a carpenter or brewmaster or whatever it is, right? Or, you know, a designer, you start drawing, you become a designer, right? Um, but a lot of people, again, going back to that whole being put in that mold, well, it's like nine to five corporate job, you're sitting at a desk on a computer all day, the only thing you use your hands was to type. And that's, you know, maybe numbers or whatever it is, right? Um, what do you think? Question. Well, it's yeah. interesting. I, uh, I actually don't know the answer. Probably. It, it probably has something to do with it psychologically. I have no idea. I, I don't have an answer, but it's just sort but of an open ended question, right? I know that my, like, it kind of also, it's believing in your creative side of things. Because when I, I took a drawing course and they actually show you that you can learn how to draw mm -hmm. and that's when I was like holy crap you know this is I can draw I can draw <laughs> you know I can draw I can create stuff I can draw I can paint I can do things and that's when I was like okay I'm actually so and I started to draw really elaborate things and portraits and stuff and I was like whoa this is great so uh, so then I started to yeah. paint as well and that's when it also that turned into a business as well so yeah interesting I, stuff. I personally think that that to me, I kind of think that would make sense. So that resonates a little bit with me, like how everything's shifting digital. I don't know if people are losing creativity per sense, but I think people aren't achieving the creativity because I feel like a lot of being creative is problem solving yeah. and figuring out different ways how to fix or create a solution to something. Sure. And I feel like that we don't need to do that as much because we have so, much, so many things that do the problems for us well, yeah but what, what, what do you guys think alex I, I think it's like you gotta tap into the childlike wonder of things it's kind of like your inner child and uh and seeing just being like super curious about things and then if you try a bunch of things you might find a better way to channel your creativity or like uh you know work on your creativity yeah i think um what a, what a lot of people consider as creative is like certain things like painting or drawing or anything, but, but any action you do can be creative. It's all in the way that you approach things and the way that you think about things. And, you know, creative expression with, um, you know, working with numbers. If you're an accountant, you can still be creative in the way that you do things or innovative in your field. And that's still creativity. And it's just as valid as painting or designing something. And I think just a lot of people don't understand um, sort of that aspect of things that it, it's it's not about a fine a fine art that's not what creativity is that's just one expression of it and the more that you start to realize that i think the more you're going to be able to tap into the things you really enjoy and, and really work your brain because like you said lucas it is about problem solving ultimately yeah i, I sorry i I don't know. If oh, you that's all good. Yeah, I, I wanted to sort of highlight a word. Uh, I think Alex or Ryan or both of you said is is curiosity. I think that's uh, probably like super important. And again, like I don't want to like put like any down. Like uh, I don't even want to try and say, but like basically what I'm trying to say is this new generation. I feel like you know kids these days are basically being put a, an iPad or an iPhone in front of the in, like in front of them just to sort of quench their boredom kind of thing. I think it's a real issue. And it's just that for parents, it's just an, I don't know, again, I'm not generalizing. It could be, the, it can be the case for some, but not for others. But um, it's just an easy way out to like, here, take the iPad, play some games on it, rather than go out and see what's out in the neighborhood or like, you know, go explore, go into the yard and I don't know, 
play with the mud, I, and like, I, whatever, right? Like, just get and out I think there. It's, I think it's really interesting as well because all these people are, like, blown away with how these kids can figure out phones so fast. And it's like, well, like, kids generally are super curious. Like, they want to learn things. Like, they're, like, they're absolute sponges for things. So if you give them a piece of technology, they're going to figure it out mm. pretty easily. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I also do agree with you, Sam. Like, I, I personally see, like, because I, I have friends that have kids. I mean, like, we all kind of do. And, like, lots of them are just give their kids an iPad or something like that. And I, I see it as, like, I understand there's, like, certain situations where, yeah. like, you want to have your kid do something. And it really sucks. And, you know, like, your kid's being hectic and it's really hard. But I think having that and giving your kid an iPad all the time is a little bit of a crutch sometimes. Oh, 100%. I mean, how did your parents do or, you know, dude, my parents kicked me out of the house and we're well, like, I go mean, play. I, iPads and iPhones <laughs> didn't, didn't exist 20, like 10, 20 that, years that ago. Is so true. That like, is true. You know, but at the same time, like we, we also aren't in that position. So I don't know how much we no, can really say course. about raising a kid. That's why I so. don't want to go too yeah. much into it. It's just yeah. sort of a thought. Let, let, let's hear about you guys and what you think. Yeah, about well, that. I mean, that all this talk around like as kids and, and how we're, you know, relying on devices and stuff. Uh, reminds me of like Brene Brown's work. Shout out to Brene Brown. Um, and she, she talks about even as adults, like the importance of play. Um, and play is creative. And like you were talking about just like playing in the mud. But, um, but yeah, like play could be anything with, without uh, the goal of creating some kind of product at the end or some kind of result. It's just the act of playing that is really, really um, uh, important for humans and for adults to tap back into. Yeah, there's a reason that virtually every single, um, you know, young baby animal plays. It's, it's essential for the you know, cognitive development. Um, and the more you just kind of stare at something and let it feed you information or entertainment or whatever, the the more impairment there's going to be when it comes to that side of things. So it's, it is important to to go explore and to find things out for yourself and not just be you know fed information all the time. And just like you said, it, it's one of the big downfalls of you know handing a kid an iPad to to keep them occupied. And ultimately, boredom is uh, it, it should be a catalyst for you as an individual to, to go find something more. Totally. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, and I think we have a couple of creative friends, like uh, like Nikki Nonis, for example. Oh man, that's the most curious person I've ever met in my life. He's always looking for like the next corner and like, oh, what if we do this? Oh, you want to go here? You want to go find this? And I, I absolutely love hanging out with him because of that. So, yeah. I mean, curio curiosity, love it. I think it's a great thing. I think everyone, if you're curious about something, you should just go explore it. Why not? Stay curious. Yeah, hundred percent. What if is the like the best question in the English language? Well, I mean, we got to wrap up a little bit pretty soon here. I think we got about five minutes. So I just want to ask you guys, turn it over to you. Do you guys have any sort of things you want to shout out? Any projects coming up? Anything that you're working on you want to let the world know about? Do you guys want to shout out your social medias? Like what, like this, this is your five minutes to do whatever you want to do. Take it away, Alex. Well, uh, Lucas, it sounds like we should start Sketch Club back up because I think you, uh, you, you benefit from some drawing. Uh, practice? Oh, of course, of course you're going to say that. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, well, I, I guess something to add, it, it, if, if you do want to do something creative, don't worry about um, <clears throat> what you think of it. Um, ultimately, like, there's no such thing as a bad drawing, really, because you're, you're just expressing something. You just do it. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't look the way that somebody else's does. Um, comparing it is completely irrelevant. It's your expression. Yeah, um, as far as the plug goes, I guess just if anybody out there listening uh, has a product idea and they're, you know, from just starting out with the idea or maybe you have some funding um, all the way up to like really established teams. We work with big clients and all the way to, to kind of the ideal people. Uh, but feel free to hop on our website, uh, anchoreddesign.co. Um, we'll, we'll share the link and uh, you can book, book a coffee with us. We'd love to meet new people and connect with other creatives. So Nice. And where can people find you on social media? Sure. Uh, so it's at Anchored Design Co. And that's A-N. Actually, 
funny story there about our name. So just this will help you remember it. But uh, anchored is obviously kind of a nautical theme, but we stylized the word, and it's actually my initials, Ryan's initials, and company in the middle. So A N C O R D uh, Design Co and uh, and at Anchor Design Co on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Awesome guys. Yeah, people out there listening to the podcast, go go give them a follow on social. Uh, they do awesome work. They're sustainable, uh, f- sustainably focused design, uh, industrial designers. Sorry, I can't speak today. Uh, but yeah, it, these guys are awesome. Seriously. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I couldn't I couldn't give these guys uh, enough of a positive review. Like, they, it's just amazing working with these guys. They're super hands on. They like super super full on too. Like, they're very transparent and. Just love working with them. They're great guys. Hopefully we'll go for lunch and stuff soon with them too once things start easing up a little bit here. Um, but anyways, uh, that has been the Break Time Podcast. Going to wrap it up here uh, real tight. Um, so yeah, I I'm, I don't even remember how I was going to speak it out. Oh, yeah, I'm, Lu- <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lucas. <laughs> I'm here with Vicky <laughs> and Sam. What up? Um, anyways, Alex and Ryan, thank you guys so much for being on the podcast. Everybody make sure you go check out their socials at Anchor Design Co check out our socials at Coast Break Collective. Leave us a rating and review. Subscribe to the podcast if you haven't. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye.